today I want to talk about an age-old scientific question, well age-old meaning few hundred years old anyway, of what is life. If you read biology books, you'll be shocked to find that they explain life to sort of bunch of functions. But that leaves open the question of what happens when life disappears, like death. We have a living cell and the living cell dies. What's the difference? The functioning has stopped, but the molecules are exactly the same. No difference. This is the part that the biologists cannot explain. What is the explanation? The explanation obviously has to be, has to come from a much more general philosophy. So in medicine, we are uh, gradually shifting from a, what the medical doctor Paul Duan says, pro-materialist worldview to a pro-consciousness worldview. This shift is brought about by quantum physics. This is why a quantum physicist like me is talking about it with such confidence, because we can answer this question. Biologists can't. Biologists work within just the space-time reality, one level. In one level reality, you cannot explain this question, because you are always stuck. What's the difference between the situation of life and death? It's an operational definition, but it doesn't work to explain why it is that in a life cell you have these functions. What's the difference? In quantum physics, consciousness is the ground of being, and objects, material objects, are possibilities of consciousness to choose from. And this is the crucial thing. Once you have done that, you have two levels to operate from. You realize that the there is a domain of potentiality, which is another name for consciousness, where the domain possibility waves exist. And then there is the domain of actuality. What is what happens when consciousness chooses? So, this too has a circularity built into it. Because Consciousness chooses, but until the choice, there is no actuality, there is no real manifest living self looking at the world as separate from itself. In, in other words, the distinction is not produced. We must have a distinction between life and its environment. This distinction is crucial, otherwise you cannot distinguish what is a bunch of molecules doing here in a living cell that is different than the same bunch of molecules that we call a dead cell. There has to be a distinction of the living cell from its environment, and that distinction is crucial. So how can we produce such a distinction? Quantum physics says that, well, tangled hierarchy. Tangled hierarchy. If there is a tangled hierarchy in the living cell, then when consciousness collapses the possibility wave of the living self, it gets caught in the tangled hierarchy and identifies with it and looks at the rest of the world as objects to its awareness. This is the mystery of the living self. So is there such a tangled hierarchy? It has been known for many decades that yes, there is. There are two macromolecules in the living cell for its functioning. One is the reproduction function, which is performed by DNA, and the other one is maintenance function, carrying out the programs of the cell that takes protein to do it. Both are macromolecules, very complex molecules. DNA has the code for making protein, and it turns out that without the protein, you cannot make a DNA. So how the living cell is produced from scratch it's a total mystery until you start thinking about two-level reality, consciousness doing it, that kind of thing. So you need two-level reality to understand life. And how is the separateness created between life and environment when consciousness 
collapses the possibility wave of the cell into the actuality of the cell. In the process, consciousness identifies with the cell in the tangled hierarchy of the cell. And this is the crucial point. Is there a tangled hierarchy? Yes, DNA and protein are the tangled hierarchical duo. So in this case, you are getting a very fundamental um, theorem in addition. If this is true, then it takes consciousness to make the first living cell. You are never going to produce living matter in the laboratory. Life comes from life. And more people experiment with living things, we find that this is a general rule. Life comes from life. Life can never come from non-life. Now get that through your belief system.